Um, started off today is uh, October the 17th of 2015. Uh, my name is Osmond Hernandez. And if you could just start off by stating your name. My name is Mary Virginia Halleck. I was Burciaga uh, when I was born, Mary Virginia Burciaga. And Burciaga is the name here in Northside that is known. All right. Okay, and uh, we could just talk a little about about your uh, family okay. history. Can okay. Okay. Start off with that. Uh, uh, I have. I'm one of eight brothers and sisters, and uh, my dad was a firm believer, and my mother as well, firm believer in education. Um, back when we went to school, um, you know, you dropped out in the ninth or tenth grade, and then you went to work. <clears throat> if you were Hispanic, most of the time, you know. Um, but there were several families in the neighborhood that did uh, believe in education, higher education. You know, I can name up family members, Cajigales, uh, Ayalas, uh, Mercados. A lot of the families um, did believe in higher education, and a lot of us did go. Uh, we all went to All Saints Catholic School. Uh, I think it was St. Joseph's before. Uh, I wish I'd had time to pick out the boxes of pictures that we have. Um, maybe I'll still get a chance to. But all my brothers and sisters graduated. They, I have a brother that's a doctor, uh, Juan Burciaga. He's a doctor of physics, so he's very well educated. Um, I've got a sister who runs her own business, and she went to TCU and graduated. Um, I've got a brother who sells real estate in Dallas, and I think it's for hours away from graduating with his master's and hadn't even come to do that. Um, I have another twin sister that won an uh, Emmy, Academy Award, Academy Award for, she worked for KERA as a production manager and uh, the four uh, people that did the research and put it on PBS won an Emmy uh, and it was about the Mexican culture, the his Mexican culture in Mexico and that was um, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago. But she won an Academy Award for that. And um, so she's very proud of that one. Uh, my dad helped, uh, my mom and dad helped, were in a couple of clubs, the North Side, na Neighborhood Northside Club or something. Anyway, they helped raise money. And it broke my heart when the fence came down around the North Side Library because my dad and my mom helped raise the money to fund, to get the fence around it at one point. And they just took it down last year. And um, they also helped, the beer joints on Main Street were all on 12th and 13th Street right there on 14th by Rancho Grande, that whole block. And as they renewed, the, the little beer joints wanted to renew their rental, uh, you know, property and, and their, for their business, they wouldn't let them. They were told that, you know, not to let these people renew their contracts or their rental property for another year because they wanted them out of there. You could pass by on a Friday and Saturday night and get shot at just from the by, you know, driving by. It used to be real bad. Um, but slowly, and you know, that's how come, you know, the, Rose, the art theater is up. And um, my dad owned uh, Los Alamos before the Gallegos owned it. And that's why I was known as Chicken in the Basket because the basket that they served chicken on was the basket they would carry me in when I, I was so tiny as a baby. I was like at six pounds or something. So, uh, but we know the Cajigales, you know, the Cajigals, the, uh, let's see, who, who owned that place? Mm, can't even remember who owns Los Alamos. <clears throat> but we, we all grew up with them. We, all, we were all very close at All Saints. Um, we all remember when Kennedy was shot. We all remember going outside crying. The nuns came out telling us the president had died. And uh, we didn't know what was going on, you know. We all went outside crying because we didn't know what had happened. And then, of course, my mother lives a block and a half from All Saints, and she was out there on the porch crying, waiting for us to come in, make counting heads to see if everybody had made it in. Um, I'm very appreciative of growing up on the north side with the family members that we know, the Lassos. Um, I still talk to these people. I still talk to these people after all these years. I try to go out to dinner with them once in a while. Um, 
I'm very fortunate and lucky, and I consider myself very fortunate and lucky to um, have grown up on the north side, to know all these good people. And it makes me mad that I didn't realize it at the time. It wasn't until I got older that I really appreciate the families. And uh, I appreciate mine. Um, we support each other. Uh, if they progress in life, then hey, it's a progression for me. Um, I've never been jealous of any of my brothers and sisters. Um, I'm their support and their mine. Uh, I didn't believe that until my daddy died in 93, 94, November 15th. And uh, that's when I felt their support. And that's when I was glad to have had them in my life. Um, we still go to church with my mom. My mother's 92 years old. She still lives on Clinton and 20th. She's had that house over 66 years. And um, the neighbors know her, the police know her. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a good neighborhood. Um, the Rodriguez's live down the street. My cousin died next door uh, where my mother lives. The Rodriguez's next door to them, wanna, she, they want to buy the house. So it's a very close-knit community. You know, they park in our place, we park in their place. I mean, th we want to move, they move. I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good neighborhood. Everybody went to Northside or to, um, from All Saints, the, a lot of them went to Northside, some went to Tech. Uh, but we have a reunion once a month, once every six weeks, and I still go out to eat with several of the people. In fact, this Sunday, if you went to Tech, you're more than allowed to go over there in front of Tech at 4.30 afternoon on Sunday and take a huge picture. We do that every couple of years. Some people, sometimes it's 20 people, sometimes it's 120. You just never know who's going to show up. So that's always um, a good feeling. Next Friday we're going to meet somewhere. And last time 37 people showed up. So that, that was a good turnout. They're all Mexicanos, you know. Not that we're prejudiced or anything. It's just the people that we hung up around with. Um, I was at Trimble Tech when they uh, killed uh, Manuel. Was it Manuel Rodriguez? When the, uh, yeah. Uh, that was a hard time. That was a hard time because it was one group of the town against the other group of the town. And we were just getting out of that when I was growing up, you know, because Rock Island didn't like, uh, you know, North Side and South Side, and it was just a do. And we were just growing out of that when um, the last part of that involved me. Um, I still remember going to the bus with my grandmother for 25 cents at the Iron Building. Uh, I could buy a hot dog and a root beer. And I'd save my money, my little pennies through the week to go downtown with her and catch the bus. And um, that was, I rem I'll never forget that. That was real good. And where everybody's was in Leonardton, I'd sit there with the viejitas because they'd look at the little viejitos and they'd be spitting and chewing tobacco and spitting this stuff out. But, oh, that's nasty. But you could put your groceries at the Leonard's. Uh, uh, they would hold it for you because people didn't have cars like they do now. Yeah. They put them in these little boxes and they'd give you a number and they'd say, that's your number to come back and get your groceries. Uh, we didn't think about milk spoiling or anything. We just gave them, the, gave them our groceries and we went around shopping. And um, Doña Lisa, she was Kajical. Kajical. Uh, she was my, mother's, my grandmother's friend. And I'd go with them every Saturday downtown to get my root beer and my hot dog. And... Uh, I remember the ladies at All Saints, they'd all run to the church, my grandmother's age, because someone had died. They didn't know who had died, but someone had died. They'd all meander in front of All Saints Catholic Church, wondering who's going to take them? Who's going to take them to the funeral? Didn't know them at all, but they were wondering who's going to take them. Uh, La Señora uh, Pete Cepeda's wife used to take them in her van. She'd take all these ladies to the van, in her van, and... Uh, I cried when that lady passed away, Pizza Bella's wife, because I said, what are the viejitas going to do now? They had no ride to the funerals, you know. But that was their outing. But, you know, um, I'm 65, and I didn't want to go to the <coughs> Catchicles bathroom because that bathroom was the, the uh, they had an outhouse. I didn't want to go to the outhouse. Uh, so I made sure I went to the bathroom before I left. I was six, and it was dark, and I was scared to death to go to the outhouse. But to this day, I still consider them my friends, you know. Well, not Doña Lisa, but I meant her, her you know, grandkids and, and stuff like that. I went to school with Frankie Cajigal. So uh, 
it's just a lot of memories, a lot of good memories. Um, I, I, I don't think I would have done anything differently. Um, my mom's 92, like I said, I see her every Sunday. That's my time. We kind of break it up because there's eight brothers and sisters. Not all of us are in town. I got a brother that lives in Hawaii and he does this security firm. He was in the mil military police for 30 some odd years and he does mi military work over there. The boys didn't want to leave and he plays golf every day. What can you ask for? Um, the cost of living is very expensive over there. Um, you know, you, you can see when something happens. When Mr. Rodriguez passed away not too long ago, we could tell something was wrong because all the cars were gathered on, gathered around the house. And um, it's just like when my brother's in town, all the cars gather around the house. So when you get eight people and their grandkids, you know, or kids to come in, the, pretty soon everybody knows something's wrong at the Rodriguez's, something's wrong at the Bursiagas's, the Vargas's, you know. It, the Martinez's, is Gonzalez. Um, it's um, it, it's a large neighborhood, but then again, it's a small neighborhood. But um, it was good. It was good. Um, my mother's memory's going a little bit. You know, Mama, do you remember? No, I don't remember. I remember going to Leonard's and everybody's, and the bathroom was colored and white. And um, I never did understand that. I never did understand. I always wanted to sit in the back of the bus and my mother wouldn't let us. I didn't understand that either. But if you were black, you could sit in the bus. And at one time, I wanted to go black. My sister one time dressed as a black person because she wanted to be black. Um, we were not, um, it wasn't until I was in high school one time that I felt that there was discrimination. You know, someone passed by and said, what are you doing with that Mexican? And I looked around and I was, the guy that I was dating was white. He said, oh. I got them. They're talking about me. So it wasn't until later on, in, you know, that I had grown up that I even discovered that there was prejudice around. Uh, I just thought some people were born this color and some people were born that color. And uh, I thought the blacks were not treated as well as even what we were. Um, but I was caught going into the, the black bathroom one time and, and the ladies told me, Sweetie, you're in the wrong bathroom. And I said, well, I just got to pee. That's all I wanted to do at six years old. I just wanted to go pee. I, you know, I didn't care what bathroom it was. But I remember that the two uh, older black ladies escorted me out. Um, I thought that was nice of them. And then we got on the bus one time, me and my mom. My mother can't drive to this day. She never could drive. My dad said, I'll take you anywhere you want. Well, after my dad died, you know. Uh, but uh, we'd catch the bus. She, it, we, I felt like the little bird with all the little birdies at the bottom, you know, attached. We'd uh, catch the bus on Saturdays to downtown Fort Worth. And then we'd come back, you know. And um, I had the best time of my life. The best time of my life. I love my brothers and sisters, and to this day I still do. I'm very fortunate in, in, in that respect because I know a lot of families. Well, I'm not going to their house if they're there. And, I guess nothing that important has ever come up for us to, to fight. But my dad always says, you don't borrow money and you don't borrow cars from each other and you'll be friends forever. We don't hang out together, but we see each other all the time. You know, we see each other all the time. My niece is just as close to me as a granddaughter because uh, I take her to Nolan on, on Wednesday mornings. I t that's my time to take her on Wednesday mornings. And I, I take that very... Um, with a lot of impact, I drive slower. I have someone else's child in my car, you know, my sister's child. You know, she'd never forgive me if something happened. <laughs> so I, I take that with great pride and, and uh, take her to school every Wednesday morning to Nolan. I pick her up on, I live on the southwest side, go to the west side and then take her to Nolan and then back to work. Uh, but if that's the least I can do, it's, you know. Uh, I think since my dad died in 93, it's made me a softer person. Um, I used to not care about anybody. I don't mind telling you that that's the way, you know. Everything is about Virginia. And ever since my dad died, I realized there's more to life than just me. I started volunteering a lot more. Um, uh, I, I, I do things more for the community. Um, you know, as far as, um, you know, you were talking a little bit about, um, you, you, you came to Northside for uh, your high school, correct? The Trimble. Trimble Tech. Trimble Tech, mm -hmm. okay. Um, now, were you involved in any community relations 
though? No, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't involved in anything until I was, after my dad died in 93, 94. Okay. Uh, I graduated in 68, a long time ago. <laughs> no, but uh, I, I was not involved in anything. And uh, I wish I had a, I remember my dad and my mom talking about the Northside Neighborhood Association, where they tried to clean up the, the little beer joints, the fence around my dad's. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I didn't uh, really do a lot until after I had, um, until 93, 94, when my dad died. Um, but now I'm a mentor, uh, a mentee for uh, mentors at Tr Trinity River Campus, TCC. I've got three men mentee mentors that I uh, mentor this semester. Last year I had two. Um, uh, I tried to do a lot of the um, community outreach programs, uh, Hispanic women, uh, and um, I'm getting a little nervous, but uh, you know I um, I just do different things to try to support. Uh, I work for the Race for the Cure. Um, I do the Trinity Food Bank on Tuesdays. I go over there and and do they take volunteers on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And I got to the point where I was even um, training TCU students. They'd send like thirty some out TCU students over there, and I'd kind of train them a little bit on how forty pounds a box, you know, thirty pounds here, twenty pounds here. So. Uh, uh, it, it, that that was good. That was very fulfilling. Um, but now I, I, you know, I I try to support you know the Hispanic women's out there, and I try to do that. And then there's um, Arturo Martinez out there, and he he does a lot of stuff, and I always try to work with him on stuff. And um, like I said, it's just now that I'm getting to where I'm more um, aware of the need for community service, you know, and uh, because of my age, uh, I don't know if, uh, because I'm around a lot of younger people, y'all's age even, in fact, and uh, I'm probably the only old lady there, but I don't look like my grandmother at her age, at my, you know, when she was 63, I didn't look anything like her, but I try, I'm a member of the Blue Zone for the city of Fort Worth that they have out there and try to stay longer, stronger, healthier lives, you know. So I'm out there trying to uh, walk and run and crawl and jog, whatever it takes, you know. I try to take care of myself. I still don't cook with bacon drippings. Even though I do have my bacon drippings on the stove, I, that's just come from my grandmother. My grandmother always had a can of bacon drippings on the stove. I, I don't cook with, I don't fry and I don't cook with that as much. Uh, my husband, one of my husbands, he was the children of my father's. He, uh, he died a couple of weeks ago. He was at Hernandez. He uh, didn't take care of himself. Him or his wife took care of themselves because, you know, Mexicanos are very prone to uh, diabetes and things like that. And he didn't take care of himself and, and he died at 68. And um, that was hard to watch because he still cooked with the bacon drippings in the tortillas, you know, and his wife did too. And, you know, it's like smoking. It's okay when you smoked and you didn't know anything was going to harm you, but when they tell you you're going to die, you put those cigarettes up. And, you know, the manteca is just as bad, you know. When I think of the lard that went into those tamales that we used to make all the time, I'm just like, oh my God, how are we all still living, you know? But, you know, they, they break it down with canola oil and coconut oil and all kinds of oils to try to get some of that fat out of the, th the, the tamales. But I, used, I learned how to make tamales and start cooking at an early age. Uh, they didn't let me right away. I was six. Uh, but uh, the women would go to St. Joseph Hall at the bottom and they'd make tamales, you know. And uh, I'd see that green lard, you know, just be put in the tamales, you know. And uh, they'd sit there and laugh. And they were funny. I can't remember a thing what they said, but I remember they were funny. And I, I learned my Spanish with them. After my grandmother died, <coughs> there was no one to speak Spanish with. Even though my mom and dad did teach Spanish to the police academy, uh, the fire department, uh, nurses, doctors, they had six week crash courses back then, city of Fort Worth. And they won a couple of contracts for a couple of years and they taught uh, six week crash courses to help nurses and firemen and police to try to respond to the people that needed help. And so they did that for a while. They
taught Spanish, but at home they spoke English. I think that's sad. Um, but I know um, two of my nephews can speak Korean, Spanish, and English. So, um, but... Um, now, were you uh, ever uh, restricted to speaking Spanish at... Uh at school? Yeah. At Al Saints I was. They used to spank my knuckles. I mean, my, they'd get a, a ruler and spank my knuckles. In fact, all of us would. Uh, we were sixth, seventh graders. We weren't eighth graders yet. And we'd be talking in Spanish. And the nuns would get a ruler and hit our knuckles and say, you can't speak Spanish. But I didn't think anything of it because she told me not to sing either. Just open your mouth, don't sing. And, you know, you know, when you're that age, it's very, uh, I took it very seriously. I, I cried. I went home crying that day because I said, Mama, the, I love to sing. I love to sing God songs, you know. I love to sing God's, and they would tell me not to sing. I can't carry a tune. I still can't carry a tune. But I would love to sing. And I was probably the loudest, you know. And I was told I couldn't sing. So I didn't sing. I just opened my mouth. So, um. You know, as, as much as I go back and I see what happened at All Saints, you know, just those two instances, other things went on, and uh, I won't go into that, but I meant um, All Saints was named number one uh, for elementary school three weeks ago on Channel 8 News at 6 in the morning. They did 100 schools, and All Saints was number one. So I, th I think that the education you got from there is, is far better than most. It's far better than most. Um, my, mother, my, mo my mother stayed home with us until my brother was in, after college. After college, my baby brother, and the one that sells real estate. Uh, and uh, she stayed home and then taught the last 10 years of her life. Went to school, finished at Texas Wesleyan, and then went to school. Because when she was growing up, it went co-ed the last two years of college and my grandfather would not let her go co-ed. So um, she finished um, with my brother and went to school two years and then finished up and taught the last 10 years of her life. And I think she would have probably still been teaching had my dad not had his heart attack. But uh, they, were, they were very hell-bent on people graduating uh, college and going to school and continuing their education. All of us have some form of education. I've got two sisters with a master's. I have a brother who's a doctor. Uh, the others have uh, their uh, bachelor's. And uh, I tried the master's. At my age, it was just too much time. Too much time is too consuming. But I didn't v value education until I finished. I'm a technical advisor at Tarrant County College, Trinity Campus. And I want to scream every day and tell people I have the best job in the world. I help students uh, kind of decide what they want to do, carry them through their education, try to get them involved in Manos a Manos or the Compass Group, uh, any group organization to get them more involved, to show them everything that I missed out on, uh, to show them that they're leaders, they can do it. And uh, it's... Um, experience you, you'll never be able to to fathom when you see them grow out of their shell to to be those leaders that you expect them to be but uh, I live through them vicariously uh, and they grow go on to do bigger and better things than what I did so um, I, I see myself through their eyes so is there anything else yeah. um, she has, uh Um, I, I guess we, you pretty much touched on okay. everything on here um, as far as uh, If you all need anything else, I can always come back at another time. Okay. I'd like to go through the three boxes of pictures that I have. Huh? My cousin uh, passed away, okay. and she's lived next door to my mom for 60 some odd years. Okay. But uh, I've got, she left me three boxes of pictures, mm -hmm. and I'd love to go through them and uh, try to get some of these people that see out the hallway, you know. Hope and um, Mike Ayala were my godparents, and they hung around with my mom and dad, you know. And I remember them leaving us and going to the dances, and I said, how dare they go to the dance, you know. And, uh, but to this day, I still have some Sarah Coventry jewelry that my mother left me. And I was the only one that kind of dresses, you know. So uh, I got to keep a lot of her.
her children when she went through it. But, you know, I, I know these people, the Hernandez is across the street from All Saints. You know, I knew them, uh, the Narvaises, the Ayalas, the um, Cacigales. Who's that one that owns Los Amos? That's going to bug me because I know them all. Um, gosh. But all my brothers and sisters have, uh, like the Garcias, they have one for each. They have a child, we have a child that matches their age group, you know. With, with so many of the families on the north side, um, the Cajigales uh, have um, a kid for each one of us, you know. Frankie Cajigal was the one that I went to school with. And I still call him Frankie, and I'm sure he doesn't like, you know, 65-year-old man doesn't like to be called Frankie, you know. It's just like Johnny, it's not Johnny. It's John now. It's not Bobby, it's Robert. But um, we had a good time. We had a good time growing up on the north side. If, um, if you do have those pictures, um, I know we have an archivist yeah. here. Um, yeah, he told me I didn't have to do it today. It's yeah. just getting to him and, and, you know, like last Sunday, I usually go spend the day with my mother. Yeah. I would have gone through him last Sunday. Mm -hmm. But my brother came into town. He teaches up north mm -hmm. uh, at Bowden, B-O-W-D-O-I-N. He teaches at all the sister co colleges out there, Texas Wesley and um, Vassar and some of the others. He teaches physics over there. But he came in, and my mother didn't have him a dinner last time he was here, so she, we all had a dinner last Sunday, so the co house was full of people. So, uh, but yeah, I'll go through them. I'd love to, I'd love to share those pictures. Yeah, and those uh, pictures, you know, if you want, they could um, get uh, archived into uh, what we're so what I'm trying to do is in um, just a, a you know, Mexican American archives for the city of Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's oh, yeah. be great. My great my, my uh, mother-in-law that uh, passed away that passed away not too long ago. She uh, she was up in her age, and she used to own a beer joint on 13th Street and and uh, where Frank Kent used to be. Okay. And um, she owned a brothel there. You know, and she didn't mind telling you about it, you know. Uh, she always scared me as a mother-in-law. I was real young, you know, but she always scared me. And, um, yeah, she, she owned a, a brothel there. And they said at the time, you know, the, the rumors had it that she had judges in her pocket. And you know, back then, it was probably feasible that I could see that coming from her, you know. Uh, uh, she carried a gun in her car. I always thought, God, that lady's scary. She carries a gun in her truck. Oh. You know, and what lady drives a truck anyway? You know, I always just, yeah, she was mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, 